Hi, and welcome back to another fun live stream. Today, Mike and I will be talking about the topic of men honoring your moon cycle. So, for a little bit of context, I just started my moon today, actually, and I'm really just relaxing. As you can tell, I have like my comfiest blanket over here. I just woke up from a really great nap, and um, I'm excited to eat some really good food after this. And the reason that we were feeling called to talk about this topic is Mike and I have been talking a lot about, if you caught our other live streams, we've talked a lot about rewriting your own story of the masculine, which we'll talk a tiny bit about at the very end, the experience that we're leading. So definitely stay tuned for that after if you want to learn about details of that. But we've been talking all about like how we as women or we as people have to rewrite our story of men and of money and of everything masculine in order for it to change for us. A lot of times we expect, but we really have to change our story with them. Hopefully this works. Looks like it's happening. What's going on, sis? Hey, how are you? I'm great. I'm up here on top of a mountain. Sorry if it's really windy. Wow. Is it beautiful? Oh, it's gorgeous up here. Oh Nature goodness. walk. Wow. So what a good day to be outside. Ooh, what a view. All of LA out there. Wow. That's a vibe. Thanks for sharing that vibe. Absolutely. So is it is, is it broken up on my end or how, how's it how is it it's a tiny bit like choppy but it can still hear you okay so. yeah if i had 5g good yeah, good, good service now okay cool <laughs> what's going on yeah. well, i was just sharing with everybody that today's the first day of my moon we decided to talk about honoring women's moon cycles as men and as the masculine we're gonna have that conversation because a lot of times women and um, people that are in their feminine essence will say will complain about their men like oh he doesn't understand me he he doesn't honor my moon he doesn't whatever and the biggest oops looks like we lost mike for a sec i'm gonna add him back in Okay. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hi again. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I was just starting to talk about a concept of a lot of times we as women, we talked about this the other day, but not in this context, that women will, you know, talk crap about their partner, their masculine partner, not understanding them and not understanding their moon. Um, not realizing that that's their story to rewrite. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I was having this thought about how whatever I wanted to give an example of how whatever we believe and whatever we think is that's going to affect how how we speak and how we think before we speak, how the words come out. And the, the example I wanted to give was of my kids. So of Fry's and Ye. And especially with Fry's, my thought process about him is he is, and it's been this since day one. He's smart. He is a genius. He's got this. He is on top of it. Like, and I think a lot of parents, not all, but a lot of parents think, oh my gosh, he's a child. I have to look out for him. I have to be careful with him. Even yesterday we were on the park and there was, uh, we were at the park and there was a mom, uh, Fries was jumping off the top of the thing and her son went to jump off the top of the thing. She was like, oh God, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, and like, she was afraid for him. Um, and I was like, oh, this is a perfect example of like, we hold different stories about children. We hold mm -hmm. different stories about um, I kids. The Jackson, too. Like... <laughs> I thought that was you for a second. <laughs> Passerbys. Would you say? Oh, passerbys. Nice. 
we tell this story about um, what we believe by how we act and how we speak and how we think and our mindset. Um, and a lot of women don't realize they're doing that with the masculine, especially around their moon. Like they're just expecting him to like not get it or be grossed out by it or like tell her to just suck it up and go. Um, and so then he, of course, he acts like that because she expects him to ask, act like that. Yeah, and like a lot of things that we've talked about, we will continue to talk about it. It starts from within and, and projects from within. And um, early on in my, in my, this happening to me, I don't know why. I didn't know why it was happening. And as time's gone on, I, I've been very, I felt very fortunate. But I've had at least 10 different women in my life uh, to include you and to include my sister and to include a good, good friend of ours on when we were on a, a road trip. Um, women have talked to me about their, their moon cycles and um, the feelings in their bodies. And I started to really, as it started coming more and more to me, I started to, to really understand some of the, the, uh, the pain. And of course, I've never had a moon cycle and I don't, I can't speak to what actually is going on in the body, but I was starting to notice that um, a lot of like the fears or a lot of the way that women talked about it was manifesting physically in their bodies. Um, and then they were, they were being met with their partners or with people in, in society with, were meeting with that same kind of energy that they were holding about the moon cycle. So, you know, part of it's rewriting the story for the, the, the partner, for society to see them, but also just honoring the fact that it's magic. I mean, it's literally cre creator magic. I mean, the ovaries um, are what, and our, our creation as finest. I mean, it's Mother Earth creation. And, and the minute we can really, I think, well, I'll segue to I was I was at the uh, I was at the coffee shop the other day. I was sitting next to two young ladies, like literally right next to them, and they were just openly talking about their, their moon cycles. And this is not about me, but this is what I did. I, I said, "Hey, excuse me, you all," and they said, "Yes." I said, "Thank you all. Thank you for being able to express." And this has nothing to do with me, right? It's it was they were probably twenty years old, and they just weren't inhibited by the fear of speaking about it. You can see it in, probably in different generations. We get to honor that. I would say 30s, 40s, 50, 60 year old, year old people were not raised in a, in a generation where it was okay to speak about it with there's love around it. And it starts with, I believe the women shifting the narrative within their own mind, body and soul and saying, hey, this is magic. This is special. Like, this is love. And then we see it starts to show up differently is what I've seen in, in my life at least. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's literally the most sacred time for us women. And there's a reason why a long time ago, there are these things called red tents for anybody who doesn't know red tents where they would actually send all the women from the community and from the tribe who were all collectively bleeding at that time. And they would put, they would send them all to a tent so that they could all bleed together because they were all so incredibly powerful and connected with God. It's like the most, the time that women are most connected with God and uh, great spirit and source energy. And it is a powerful time. She is literally shedding the month prior to her. She is releasing what doesn't serve her. She's preparing for to be a brand new person, a brand new woman to show up in a brand new way. So that brings to mind that I told everybody I was going to chat about this at the end. Um, but like that, if you are approaching your moon or you're approaching your moon cycle, or you're on your moon cycle, like it would be a really good time to be rewriting your story with the masculine because you are about to shed everything from the last month and the last however many years of your life. You're about to have a clean, fresh slate that you can rewrite that story with the masculine and, and it's going to be so powerful yeah you know you know it just came to my mind as you were saying this too I'm reflecting on my partnerships and women and women i've been with and and how much i can feel especially in sexuality but also just the the depth of love in regards to the cycles and whether it be right before or right after there's what i'm really trying to say is let's partner together on this. Like, even though it's happening inside the woman's body and we often use it for pregnancy, let's look at it as 30 days of partnering together, of feeling at our deepest together and like being able to like know when we are attracted sexually, when we're not at our deepest and like make it a thing that we work together on and, and engage the masculine and with the feminine together. How, okay, I, I never thought about that to just now. It would be, it'd be, it'd be fun, but also be like deepening the love.
Yes, absolutely. Because there is such a shift. I mean, there's such a noticeable difference that to try and tell a woman like, hey, like be different, be how you are the rest of the month. It's like no. each week the woman is supposed to be in a different energetic and a different vibe, putting off different hormones and putting out different frequencies and everything. And especially at this time, it's like, it, we're meant to be dramatically different right now. Resting, mm -hmm. sleeping, caring for ourselves, and just being in that very sacred space so that we can hear God, so that we can hear great spirit source energy like, connecting us and, and guiding our next path, not only for us, but for our collective that we're involved in. Um, and like you said, like that's going to work out way better for the masculine if he honors that than if he just tries to make her be like she is the rest of the month and just push on through. Yeah, I look forward to manifesting like an energy to the world where, where men are realizing like the holding, not just to be told like, oh, I'm on my cycle. So now I have to act differently because she's acting differently, but like honoring it for what is and, and holding that space for creatorship. Yeah, yes. that's beautiful. Beautiful. We're hitting the 10 minute mark. Cool. Yeah. So I'll just really briefly share with everybody that Mike and I are co-leading an experience called Rewriting Your Story with the Masculine, where we're going to guide you. It's a six week experience. Um, it starts this month and we'll be guiding you on how to rewrite your story with the masculine. You can absolutely do it yourself, but it feels really good to be guided and if that calls to you join us like we're so psyched everybody who has joined so far has their different story with the masculine and what they want to rewrite and i couldn't be more excited to support everybody and to support anybody who's watching is like okay i really want to be a part of something like that um, we'll be holding the masculine and the feminine energy for you as you shift that and um, whether you're on your moon soon to be on your moon not getting your moon right now, or um, you might get it later, like you will have recordings of this. So I would highly suggest doing it as at a time where you're about to shed everything or you're going to shed everything. And if you're beyond your moon. Yeah, beyond the moon too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because you still get a cycle. Like I, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people miss that. It's like you're still cycling with the moon, even if you're not actually bleeding with the moon, so. Absolutely. And molecular cells are shifting, changing, and shaping every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Well, Ooh. thanks for holding space for my man, Mike. Really appreciate it and sharing all of your beautiful knowledge. And I'm psyched for the next time we do another live. I look forward to it. Yeah, me too. Bye bye. Love Have you. a great rest of your hike too. Love you. Thank you. Love you all.